Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Ami Broker Trading Systems and Tutorials. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a really, really cool video. In fact, um, it's actually revisiting seven entire trading systems uh, that we looked at a couple of years ago. And the best part about this is that we're looking at the last two years, which are now 100% out of sample data. So in other words, they had never been traded um, in this particular data or in this time frame the last two years before. So this is basically what this is the ultimate test of their strength and whether these trading systems actually perform well. So this is just going to be so fantastic. Literally, it, it started a couple of years ago at my site. It's asxmarketwatch.com. We had uh, just a quick post, seven trading uh, systems and their returns from the last 13 years. Every single trading system started with an equity of $50,000. Some of them went up to millions of dollars. Some of them went up to just, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars over 13 years. But the best part was Thomas's comment on this particular post. Post, um, saying interesting comparison of the trading systems. How was the optimization done? Was there a separate in sample and out of sample period? Now, honestly, that is the best question. And at the time, I did not do the right thing, and I used just completely in sample data for my testing. Um, so this last two years, this is the out of sample stuff, and we get to see whether these trading systems held up or not. So let's jump straight into it. Really quickly, just the trading systems that, that we'll be looking at are our highest high trading system, that's a trend following, moving average channel trading system, a Bollinger Band trading system, a moving average crossover, like a, a normal crossover. Um, the next one is the sell in May and go away. So you've probably heard that one before. The leap of faith, which is trading gaps. That one was really cool. And the last one was a moving average up and down trading system. So before we jump into, into the results, a buy and hold, this is the buy and hold result so that we can compare this over the last two years as well. So for the last two years, buy and hold performed 13%. Um, that was the most common return for a buy and hold system. That's just a histogram. I, I show how to do this, um, a Monte Carlo test in my other videos as well. And this is the um, this is the scatter plot of the maximum drawdown. So we had up to 50% drawdowns for a buy and hold, and we had up to 40% to 50% gains for a buy and hold as well. So really wide variation, um, which is what you might expect with no stop losses and, and sort of no no system in place. So that's what we're comparing ourselves to. The first one, we'll go through them in order. The first one was the highest high trading system. Um, it returned an average of 23% over the last 13 years, and it was a, a buy on a close of the last 85 days and sell on a close of the last 35 days. This is what it looks like here. So we've got you know a nice buy signal, obviously a trend following sig uh, system, this one, and I've just visualized it on the chart using Ami Broker, which is just the coolest thing that you can do. I have a video on how to do this um, at my site as well, just um, you know, you can check that out separately. But you see it, it follows the trend, nice long trends. So for our highest high trading system, if we were to look at the compound annual return, um, we had it actually came back for the last two years, it came back in two places. So we've got 24% and we had 10% as well being the most common returns. So, you know, as a systems trader, that's a little bit scary. Um, you know, it's, it's not actually the best thing. Really what we'd prefer is just a nice single um, peak there like we saw with our buy and hold. Um, however, one thing it does have going for it is the maximum drawdown, as you can see, is, uh, is only 20% as the maximum there. And the, the most common ones are around 15% or 10% for the drawdowns. But we've got, uh, we've got returns, probably the most common being 25% and the other one being 10%. So does that hold up? Well, you know, it's not too bad. So that's our highest high um, trading system there. Now the next one, really quickly, was the moving average channel trading system. Let's have a look at that one. Moving average channel was this. So if we look at this on a daily chart, which is what we looked at, this is basically a 170 day moving average. I'll just increase this a little bit. There you go. 170 day moving average and it was 10% above it for a buy and a close below the moving average for a sell. And as you can see, 
you know, you capture those long trends, but you might have a few small losses in between as well. So how did that one perform over the last two years? Well, here are the results. We had an, uh, the most common compound av uh, annual return being 12%. Now I should let you know as well that this is, uh, this is a Monte Carlo test that I've done for all of these over the last two years and it was done over a thousand different simulations randomly. Um, so in other words, if there were more than, more than 20 stocks um, that it could take a position in one time, it would actually randomly select the stocks that it took just to give us a bit more of a real world uh, feel. And so that's why we got so many different permutations of this data. So that's a thousand different runs of this trading system um, under random circumstances. And uh, yeah, so that's the compound annual return and 12% per annum. So was it amazing? Not really that amazing. However, when you look at the scatter plot, so we've got our drawdown down this side and our return up this side, it's really very stable. Like it's much more stable than our other ones so far. The drawdown is about 12%. So that's really respectable. You know, anyone should be able to trade with a 12% drawdown. That's quite, um, that's quite modest. But the only thing is the return was only about 12% as well. So I guess, you know, you get what you pay for with this particular trading system. And that's that one. Now, let's check out the next one. Number three was the Bollinger Band trading system. Uh, now, this was based on one that Nick Raj made more prominent um, in his book, which was uh, the Unholy Grails, it was. Absolutely fantastic book. Nick Raj is an absolutely stand-up guy as well. I strongly recommend you check out his website. Um, the average annual, annual return over the last 13 years was 26% per annum. Now, let's see how that actually held up and I'll show you what it looks like as well. So the Bollinger Band breakout, that's it there. So very, very simple. And as you can see, it capture the, captures those nice long trends as well. There's your exit with the red arrow. And you know, it's so easy to visualize this data using Ami Broker, which is, you know, I really, really love what it can do. As you can see, a few small losses there. And then this one looks like the beginning of a nice big trend. Oh, look at that. $15 to $45. I'd be pretty happy with that. <laughs> so let's check out the Bollinger Band. Now, this one was a little bit, uh, this one was a little bit strange. Basically, it had such a, a focused group of trades uh, or, or different random variations of trades. In other words, it mustn't have taken too many trades on the ASX top 200, because really this is the this is all the data that it came up with, and it had lots of different permutations still, a thousand different permutations, but you know all of them were really quite focused, and it's the same with the scatter plot. So about a 16% uh, to 18% drawdown, really quite focused, and a 17 to 19% return. So you know this this I would consider you know very stable. Obviously, Nick Raj is a master trader and a master systems trader as well. Um, I highly regard his work, and obviously the stuff that I have created here can't quite compare to the stuff that he has created as well. So that is a very telling tale. Um, these returns are quite focused, and the drawdowns are quite focused as well. So does it still hold up? Yes, it definitely does. I would say. Um, let's move on to the next one, which is the moving average crossover. So have you ever, I mean, I think a moving average crossover is probably one of the first, uh, trading systems that, that we learn when we're looking at trading systems, moving average crossover. There it is uh, a really, really simple one. This one, basically when, when the moving average crosses above the other one, then it's a buy signal basically. Um, and as you can see, all I've done is just colored the moving averages for when it's in the sell signal land and, um, and you know, color them green when it's in buy signal land. So I think this is a 90 day moving average um, and a 60 day moving average. So nothing too fancy. Let's check out the results. What were they previously? Average annual return 27% over 13 years. Now let's have a look at the actual results over the last two years. So compound annual return um, over the last two years. Now again, we get this these three peaks, which is not particularly ideal. However, we've got the one main one, so you know I'm a bit more comfortable about that. We've got a 22% or 24% um, annual return as the most common over the last two years. 
However, it could go up as far as 30 to 40%, or it could go as low as 2 to 10%. So that is where I'd be worried about. Like I would actually, I wouldn't really enjoy that uncertainty. And if you look at the scatter plot or the scatter diagram, we've got our drawdown here and our annual return here. And 40%, you know, up in the top end of the annual returns, most common being 20, 20%, 10% to 20%. Uh, with 15% to 20% drawdowns over the last two years. So how does that hold up? Well, it still does, it holds up to a certain degree, but I wouldn't rate it very highly as a standalone system. Um, basically, that is that's that data is a little bit too scattered for my liking. Let's move on to the next one. We've got the sell in May and go away. So obviously you've heard of sell in May, um, you know, and don't come back until Labor Day, I think is the is the the common saying. I'll just check if I have actually, yes, yeah, so I've, I've actually visualized this data as well. This is really, really cool, guys. I've just chucked it down the bottom here in a, in a, um, in a filter type um, graph. And as you can see, it's got the buy and sell arrows. So buying um, in November and selling in May. Really, really cool. Now, what were the results? The results we had around 9% per annum over the last 13 years from 2000 to 2013. And let's have a look at the most, most recent two years. So recent two years, average annual return, most common annual return, 7% per annum. So that's kind of still in the same region. That's, that's looking pretty good. The scatter plot, let's have a look. Wow, that scatter plot is, uh, is pretty ugly. <laughs> Look at that. That is way too... I mean, it's it's a scattered scatter plot, isn't it? <laughs> so I, I don't really like that at all. Um, we've got uh, returns of 0%, uh, up to 16%, or drawdowns from only 2%, which is great, and up to 12%, which is, you know, I mean, that's still not too bad again. Um, but does that beat our our buy and hold? Well, our buy and hold, yeah, I mean, given that the buy and hold was quite scattered as well, and the, the average annual return was about 15%, or the most common annual return, yeah, I think a buy and hold might still beat that one, even though you'd have more drawdowns, for example. So that's, that is still extremely, extremely interesting. I think we've got only two more to go, and this is probably the best one, or this one got the most sort of uh, views and, and comments, was trading gaps. So I have uh, visualized this as well. If we've got our, so these are our gaps. Basically, if it gaps up or if it gaps down, um, that is a buy or a sell. With this particular one, I had made it um, over 150 day moving average as well. So that's, that's kind of the, the safety switch. If it goes below the 150 day moving average, then ultimately it will sell out. Um, but if it's above it, happy days. And as you can see, it gaps up there, gaps down there. That's a buy and a sell. Pretty pretty simple stuff. And, you know, it's got a few losses there, a few, quite a few losses actually. <laughs> but there, look at that, one nice big gain there as well. So again, pretty common for a trend following type system. The results we had were 24% per annum over the last 13 years from 2000 to 2013. And let's see the last two years. So again, we've got that um, bimodal histogram there. So, you know, that's not amazing. However, we can still work with it. We've got the common areas of about 15% and 24% per annum. So that's still better than a buy and hold. Uh, let's check out the scatter plot. And that one, the drawdown is about 18% as well. So that's that's way better than a buy and hold also. So this one this one has performed actually pretty well. Um, and, you know, all it is, is is trading in the direction of a gap, which is, again, quite a common, uh, co common ideal in the trading world. A lot of people will tell you about it, but not many people will actually give you the data on it. So this is really, really cool to be able to see that, you know, the actual results and the actual returns. So we're up to the last one, guys. Thanks for sticking it through. This is the trading system number seven, moving average up, moving average down. And this was a very simple one in that all we were looking at was, um, I think I showed it to you before as well, and I did it on a weekly chart. So 
really, really simple. All we had was if the moving average was moving up, then it's a buy. If it's moving down, then it's a sell. Pretty simple. And again, look at that. You get those nice long trends and you get a few small losses as well. So the results we had were actually pretty good for this particular trading system. 33% per annum um, over 2000 to 2013. Now let's check out the most current two years results. We are looking at, so compound annual return. Well, we've got around 10% as the most common um, and probably nine to nine to twelve percent being the most common. There's a second peak here of around twenty two percent, but still not really that common compared to the ten percent per annum uh, return. If we were to look at the scatter plot as well, yeah, the most common results are around a ten to fifteen percent or five to fifteen percent uh, return, and with a five to fifteen percent drawdown actually. So. You know, this one is, I wouldn't be that comfortable trading this one as well because of the variation. Like it is quite a bit more varied um, in its results than the other trading systems. And also, as you can see, when you're comparing, I think it was, so it was 30% per annum, it did return. And now we're looking at 10% to 15% per annum. You know, we've got quite a difference there, haven't we? So really, that is the benefit of using out-of-sample data, which we now have over the last two, we uh, two years. Um, and many thanks to, to Thomas for his comment at my site as well, because it makes all the difference. When you are testing, make sure you reserve one or two years in the later years for your out-of-sample data. Now guys, thank you so much for stopping by and viewing. Stop by the site, it's asxmarketwatch.com and um, throw us a comment on Twitter or my site or on YouTube. Have a great week and bye for now.